Casting live from inside the power band. This is the blah. In this episode, everybody dies. I'm your host, the Wolverine, along with my faithful companions, Jar Higo, Bahoy, and C Lab Forever. What's up? Welcome to the podcast, folks. This week we're talking about the highly anticipated Justice League The Snyder Cut, starring everybody knows who's in this movie. I am very excited to talk about this. Let's get to it. High level. High level. I know one of you is going to shh all over this movie, man. I can't wait. Go for it. At a, um, at a high level. Drop trow. I've struggled to get into the DC universe, but I don't really want to dig into that for my high level right now. But just a little bit of context. Um, yep. I'm really interested in this movie in the sense that it got released and funded at all. Um, I know there's some mm. historical precedent for this, which I wasn't really aware of or had forgotten about, like Superman 2, the Donner cut, and, you know, some of the Blade Runner stuff we talked about, but in terms of like getting a huge chunk of funding, 70 million bucks to finish this and the circumstances of why Snyder left and all that kind of stuff. It's cool to see. Yes. It's cool to see what's different about it than the other one, despite, you know, people not being happy with either of the movies. <laughs> what? It's an interesting experiment. Well, just like, even if you hate both movies, it's cool to see that there's two things to compare. That's what I mean, you know? Like, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter if you like it or not. Like, for the t to the point of it's cool to kind of mm. get behind the curtain and see what happens when somebody's given the money to actually finish something, as opposed to, like, you know, always wishing there was something, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. Um... I definitely enjoyed it better than going back because I've never seen the original cut. Mm. And so I went and watched the original cut and like same. It is the one of the worst pieces of cinema I've ever seen. And I think at the time I, I thought this is a heaping pile of dog shit and there's like two fucking corn kernels in it that I kind of liked and the rest of it like it was just a complete piece of shit. So in comparison to the original cut, it's it's good. On its own, it's okay. And um, I'm curious to hear more about what you guys thought. I am dying to hear what Ben thought. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, favor us, if you would, please. Um, after, like I said, spending somewhere around 10 hours of my life uh, <laughs> mining this film for something that I found to be redeeming, um, I'm really tired and worn out. I've been worn down, like worn smooth, like a stone in a stream. Mm. I just don't have any energy to spit vitriol at it. Wow. I don't like it. I don't like it. I didn't like it before. I don't like it now. I don't have any problems with Zack Snyder per se. Um, there are elements that I like about the new DC movies. You know, I like Hank Cavill as Superman and I don't like Batfleck as Bath man. <laughs> <laughs> I like Gal Gadot as, as Wonder Woman. Um, I, Aquaman is stupid, and you know, <laughs> having a having a jacked up, tattooed, you know, rough looking dude like Jason Momoa cast as him doesn't do anything to change my mind about that. And uh, Flash was just cringeworthy. <laughs> in this film there's been a lot of talk about uh you know uh, i guess kev i'm talking to you here you're, sure. you're being upset by all the humor in the marvel movies and you know i, I kind of know what you're you're saying but the attempts at humor in these movies oh god mm. okay <laughs> <sighs> really 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 bad anyways there you go. There's a there's a start. <laughs> and a great start it was. An opening salvo. It was a salvo, dude. I was expecting to be a little bit closer to your end of the spectrum. I'm 
I was surprised I ended up a little bit more in the middle, but I'm I'm curious to hear where you were at on this one, Kev. Firstly, I'd just like to say that that was quite possibly the best ever, certainly your best op- opening salvo on a movie on this show, <laughs> all 103 episodes. Congratulations. That was very funny. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're saying with those gripes. Uh, I, on the other hand, loved this movie. Um, we had talked about Vince Clarthau being a guest this week. Um, Vince is another big like DC movie fan like me. And we've talked about all these movies at length. And unfortunately, he couldn't make it onto the show today. But um, I really like this. I loved Man of Steel. I loved Batman versus Superman. Really more the extended director's cut than the theatrical. You know, Ben, you you got me into Snyder with 300. Like, I didn't even know anything about that movie that wasn't on my radar until you you told me about it. Now, that is such a good movie. And I'm also a, just a huge fan of Watchmen. I think that that is such an excellent, underrated movie, you know? And this continues that, in my opinion, that great... No? It doesn't continue it, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay, I want to hear more about that. Uh, I think that it continues Snyder's, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't know, energy, Vision, legacy, style, flavor. I guess. mission, style, yeah, all that stuff, I guess, you know, like, I mean, I, I had seen the original cut of this film when it came out, and you said it perfectly, Chad, it is a brown paper lunch bag of dog shit lit on fire <laughs> in front of, front of Mr. Strickland's house from Back to the Future. It's terrible, like... In pretty much every way, yeah. Oh, my God. It's so dreadful. I think there were, like, a couple of parts that I noticed the differences, and I was like, oh, that would have been kind of cool if that was in the extended cut, you know? But, I mean, I'm talking one or two. Yep, there's two. It was mostly, like... I'll tell you about them later. (laughs) Dialogue parts. (laughs) Right. But I really liked liked this. I liked that he got to be able to... That he was allowed to finish this. And I, I think it's really good. I think it's exactly what Justice League should be. Like, when you talk about, like, a big team kind of movie, I think this nails it pretty good. You know, there's origin stories in it that aren't annoying origin stories. Um, we got enough of a ramp up with the Superman thing, so it wasn't ridiculous to put that whole storyline in of resurrecting him. And I don't know. I just thought it was I thought it was well done. You know, I mean... There's definitely parts of it I think could have been better. And I definitely have superhero fatigue in general. I think I'm psyched about the DC movies because they're not the Marvel movies. And because it's Snyder, I like the darker tone. DC comics were always way more well-written, more cerebral, and they always had a darker tone. And I feel like these films match that. And I, and I really like that. I like that they're different. And I'll just leave it at that for now. Zooming out a little bit further. Zooming out, yes. Um, Like, we talked high level, and I want to talk about, like, Superman looking down on Earth level. Mm. Just to kind of line up with what you were saying, both of you were saying, actually, with the superhero fatigue and being worn down like a smooth stone in a river. Like, mm. I, um, I think my superhero fatigue, I was thinking about it last night, and go with me on this analogy here. And I'm not at all trying to be anti-religious, but this reminds me a lot of church where like I went to church every week when I was a kid just because it's what you do in some families. And yep, it's the same fucking thing year after year, you know, like on this date, we talk about this thing. And the only thing that's different is like the sermon or whatever. Everything else is exactly the fucking same. And like when you're six, you don't pick up on it. You're folding fucking paper airplanes in the pews out of the papers and shit. But when you're like 10 and you're still going to this fucking thing or 12, Mm. you're like, Mm -hmm. God damn, dude, this is so fucking repetitive. And I feel like the superhero and comic book space is like the society's church right now. And we're just seeing the same shit over and over and over and over. And my fatigue is like that and the stories specifically in DC space are stories that premiered in like 1938 and like they're just yeah well worn and well trod and I'm just fucking tired of them I agree so even a reasonable execution or a great execution I'm finding myself a little bored I guess 
No, it's it's D O. I think it's D O A, Chad, yeah. because like because of that, and and like I'll echo, agree, and you know, sort of play to Ben's um, position that it, it's. I I really would be interested to see, like, if this came out first, like, if this had come out like before Avengers in 2012, like, how would we feel? I'd be really interested to be able to go back in time and see that. You know sure. what I mean? Because I, I think that we would feel very differently. But I agree with you. It's like, how many how many times can you tell the same story? You know, it's like massive world. You know, it's like you said. We've joked about it numerous times. Like, massive world-ending threat. Oh, it's, and it's just like, Space you know, Hitler over and over again. Sa- yeah, exactly. Save the quantum universe. Save the universe. Save the multiverse. It's like the same thing every single time. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that um, or I'm I'm interested to see in the upcoming Batman film, A, Pattinson is Batman, and B, that I've read that the director wants to kind of focus on Batman more as a detective. And that interests me because that's not, you know, one of these scenarios where it's like we got to save the galaxy, save the universe, save the multiverse, yeah. whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like I, I just – I'd love to see something different. And even that's not going to wow me that much because of what we're talking about. It's just the f- the fatigue is so intense. I mean, I think the fact that it's Snyder, the fact that it was so long, he was basically given carte blanche to finish it in terms of length and all that is probably what's propping me up here mm. more than anything, you know, because I definitely have the same fatigue. Like, I keep looking at Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I'm like, well, I'll wait till it ends. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> I don't have, I, God, I don't have the strength. <laughs> ben, what do you think about all that? Do you think you'd have felt differently if this had come out, you know, a couple of years ago? No. I kind of agree. I think, I think what you said a second ago about the world ending space Hitler bullshit is part of the problem here, where because the stories were created in the 30s and 40s, all of the early interesting well i don't know i was gonna say all the early interesting storylines have been tread but maybe to be more accurate it's like a bunch of dumbass superhero bullshit surrounding world war ii you know like shit our grandparents or whatever what our parents maybe would have read in the golden age of comic books like for me my my preference is you know the 60s and 70s silver age bronze age stuff and then the modern stuff you know so like sure. 60s was kind of all of the Marvel stuff. 70s was kind of all of the Euro, you know, heavy metal stuff. And then obviously Mm. for us, the 80s and 90s was the modern era. So it's just all this older DC material I always have had a hard time connecting to. That's not to say I don't like it. I just never connected to it. And I just feel like the stories are all so old. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. If that makes sense. And and, No, it does. And I I would say, you know, that kind of, I'm I'm going against my own point from before. Like, it's not, like I said, like, the writing was always better in D.C., and the stories were more cerebral. This is not one of those stories. No. You know what I mean? So, like, I I didn't really get into the D.C. stuff until I was older, and I started reading some of the graphic novels. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is really good, and the dialogue's fantastic and all of that sort of thing, but that's not really carrying over to this film per se, you know? Are you referring mainly to like the Frank Miller stuff? No, actually I wasn't. I was referring to like kingdom come and I have a couple of other graphic novels. Like, so it's more like contemporary DC. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I know a lot of people that say that and I just, I didn't read a lot of the contemporary stuff, but I used to read some of the DC comics like back in the, you know, mm. Like, I used to look at my brother's comics back in the 70s, and he mainly had Marvel, but he did have some DC. And the DC always seemed way more, I don't know, half-baked and shallow, and the, the heroes and the villains both just seemed sillier. Is it like saccharin or just like... <laughs> to, to me. So I just don't share that intuition at all. But I guess I don't have the benefit of reading uh, modern graphic novels. And maybe maybe that's it, Ben. I mean, maybe I'm maybe it's just you know I'm colored by the stuff that I've read, and it's more contemporary stuff like um, Batman: Arkham Asylum. I think that's the name of it. You know, yeah, like I saw that they were talking. I saw some of the historic stuff. Like I was just reading a little bit about the comic ages, just to refresh my memory. And they were talking a lot about the 
you know, bronze age, <clears throat> excuse me, the bronze age between the 70, 1970 and 1985 or thereabouts. And that was when a lot of the darker stuff came up. And that's when a lot of the creators were, you know, maybe relaunching some of the old school shit darker. Mm. So even through to the late 80s, early 90s, like you said, with some of the, you know, Arkham Asylum stuff and some of the, the Dark Knight and all, a lot of the darker shit taking an old school campy character like an Adam West's Batman and like making it dark, for example. But I think like, which is uh, odd because that's the, actually the only Batman I would ever want to see on, <laughs> there on you go. screen right now. Sure. Sure. I was just going to say like in a similar vein, like I didn't like fucking violently hate this movie. Like I, I enjoyed it. It was good. I felt like it was, it was a bit self-indulgent, but that's kind of the point. So therefore I'm okay with it. But like, the epilogue is like i'd watch that movie you know like i, I don't care about yeah. space hitler i want to see like really fucking weird versions of this stuff you know i guess but so maybe to your point benny like a campy batman would probably be you know a nice you know glass of ice water on a hot day but yeah like a like a like a comedy batman movie with you know yeah i'd be down with that yeah i'd be down with that too with like a sort of schlubby, not in super good shape, Batman wearing way sure. too tight of tights, and you know, like all that stuff would just be lots of day glow colors. I think that would be fucking. It'd awesome. be great. Another like you know, Dark Knight film noir Batman, where you know we're focusing on him being a detective this time, <laughs> getting to the heart of crimes in the dark, <laughs> deep dark heart of Gotham. <laughs> like I just, come on, man, don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> i mean we were espousing the uh the beauty of galaxy quest so there's definitely something to be said for a uh for a send-up yeah but it's gotta be like all the way like you have to like ragnarok was a send-up for sure and i think that that did quite well yeah right but you and i think ragnarok kind of got maybe a third of the way to where we're talking about right now yeah, yeah. like you you have to commit fully like you can't you know a lot of the marvel movies with the exception of ragnarok you know, had like the familiar dialogue, the contemporary dialogue and like the jokey stuff that was, you know, it was funny on the first watch through, but no way did it get us anywhere near like a schlubby paunch day glow color. (laughs) Adam, Adam Westy kind of, you know, like the tick, you know, like that would be sure, you know, another and or galaxy quest. There's another, those are two examples of like where you're fully committed and we're going to just make it funny, you know? And I think that would be cool too, for sure. But even like the, um, you know, moving away from the campy hypothetical, like even just like, we'll get into the cast and how much every single human in this movie is not a good casting later. But um, the Batman character in this and the Batman character in Batman versus Superman being like such a grumpy fuck, like, the story is like Batman's really grumpy and just fucking kills people now. And it's like, I want to watch a movie about how he got there. I don't want to watch a movie about how he, how he, how he fights pointy Thanos, you know, like I don't, yeah, I don't really care about, I mean, we're, we're, I'm saying the same thing. I don't really care about the space Hitler stuff. I don't really care about the like multiverse ending bullshit. No, I'm, I mean, look, I'm, I don't, I don't need to see another Lord of the Rings fucking battle with a bunch of digital fucking elves slicing each other's fucking digital elf heads off. Yeah, I'm like I'm with you 100 percent on that, and I think like jumping back to one of my comments a minute ago, like I, I, you know, Arkham Asylum, the graphic novel is so good, you know, and it's about Batman kind of getting. I can't remember if it's he gets trapped in the asylum or he infiltrates the asylum and is then trapped in there with them. Like that was that's the kind of thing I'd like to see something like that that has you know that kind of thought because. It's it's never just like, oh, it's the Riddler and this. Like, it's it's always more cerebral. And there's always, you know, more meat to it, you know? So I, I'm, I agree totally with what you're saying, Chad. Like, let's see the movie with how he got that way. Not, I'm building a troop carrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Um, I'm also like, okay, so this is for Ben. Like, you know, being a, a Snyder fan... I mean, I'm assuming you're still a Snyder fan. Like, you turned me on to 300. No. No, you're not a Snyder fan anymore? Not anymore, man. Yeah, I'm Why? Kind of the same. Can you, let's, ha- let's talk about that. I want to hear your guys' thoughts about that. You made me watch a four-hour movie in 4-3. In 
Go fuck yourself, Zach Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and your artistic vision. <laughs> I love it. I love how hardcore that you're willing to go about that. <laughs> I love it too, man. This is, <laughs> what, uh, okay. All right, well, just pa- pausing on that, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Deleting this movie from existence, what was your pre Snyder Cut Justice League view of of his work recently? Or your there you go out of curiosity. Oh, I don't like everything he's done. I, I liked Three Hundred when it came out. Um, I haven't watched it in a while, so I might feel differently about it now. Um, hmm. Watchmen is good. I liked Man of Steel. A lot of people didn't like that, but I liked it. Um, nah, that's about it. I felt somewhat similarly. Like when Three Hundred came out, I was all about it. I had already owned the comic and was very familiar with it and really liked how truthful it was, truthful to the comic. I may have my dates all mixed up here, but like, I think I was coming off of the Lord of the Rings trilogy or at least part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and my frustrations with the changes. And so I was super stoked to see someone be true to the source material now, with more hindsight, as I've said in a variety of other episodes here, like I prefer elevation of the source material. And so I feel like both 300 and Watchmen are truthful homages to, excuse me, whores the overs to. Yes. Thank you. The source material. And I find that boring. However, like he he has a visual talent and a visual style that's, you know, like he he likes making eye candy. and. It can be enjoyed for that in terms of just the way things are shot and his million slow-mo shots in every movie. And the Watchmen Ultimate Cut or whatever it's called, the director's cut, was quite was actually an improvement over the original cut. So You mean the one that included the comic book thing? Yeah, the kid. recent one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that it was, was, really that was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. Um I still feel like it's just not none of his stuff, any of it, has elevated the source material. I feel like he's a kind of person that is like a, an artist, a really good artist that only copies other people's art. Like he does really good cover songs. And like, I, I, I know that sounds really shitty, but like he's a really good cover band and he can actually like really fucking knock it out of the park covering fucking Prince or Elton John or Led Zeppelin or whatever. But he's not those guys, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes total sense because you're I think you're I think you're nailing it, dude. You know, but I, 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 I'm not a fan of any of his work in DC in terms of the stories. I don't like the direction that he went with it. Um, you mean like the overall arc between from Man of Steel to here? Because yeah, these... I just I went back and watched both of the his Superman movies, and um, I fucking hated them before, and then I watch them now, and I don't hate them, but like I just don't agree with the direction, and I don't agree with the. Superman's kind of a dick or like the darker side of it. I just it just mm. isn't true to the character. The character's like fucking hot dogs and beer, fourth of July, all American. He's Homelander, but like not fucking a psychopath. Like he's like he's like the most fucking wonder bread superhero there is. So I don't know. We don't need to get into those other movies, and I would prefer not to go into great detail there, but All right, okay. All right. Well no, I mean we can go into them a bit, but like, you know. It's, well, uh, I mean, it, it's relevant in the sense that, like, the arc started with Man of Steel and ends with this movie. You know what I mean? Like, that, these, those three films are, like, connected like that. But, n- yeah, no, I get it. And he wanted to do two more to do a five-movie arc or whatever, so. Right, right, right. What, what Two more what? Justice League movies? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, did, did, you didn't material. see any of that material out there? It was, like, while Superman was dead, Batman fucking fell in love with Lois and she's pregnant with his baby and fucking. Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, yeah. Like he, he, Snyder like was like, I'm not going to ever get to make these movies. So this is what I was going to do. And it was going to do the whole epilogue thing. Like the, all the entire next movie was basically going to be that epilogue stuff. So whatever it's worth, it's an article worth reading, but we, we don't need to get into it. All right. Well, we can link it up and people can check it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I get, I get what you're saying. Sounds like a great soap opera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think, look, Chad, I think you're right. I think, um, you know, 300 is a faithful visual representation on film of the graphic novel. Ditto Watchmen. Like, he he goes panel by panel almost, you know. It's yeah. kind of like. He does a pretty good job. Rod- yeah, no, he does a really good job of it. He does. He's, it's like what Rodriguez did with Sin City, you know, same mm-hmm. idea. And 
while he does do a good job of those, you know, you take Sucker Punch and you throw it into the mix, which is not based on anything, at least to my knowledge. I could be wrong about that. But visually, it's a great movie. It's like, but you invariably get to the end and you're like, what just happened, man? Like, I, mm. I don't, I have no idea what just happened. And I own a copy of that, too. So I don't know. I like, it, yeah, it's a, it's a fair point, man. You know, he's he kind of got like a cover band kind of feeling going on, I guess, a little bit. Or a lot bit, maybe. And that's not to say I could do what he did. Like, I don't I don't think I could. But no I, I want to be super clear. I'm not totally shitting on the guy, but it's the vibe I get. And and for me, despite all that, like, I still think that this four-hour cut is a well-crafted movie, and I like it. It's good. It's exactly what I think it should have been when the other crappy version came out. The Justice League, as people call it. Hmm. You know, and I, I, I like the elements of it. Yes, it's like, you know, fighting the Space Hitler thing, but... I think the execution was good. Yeah. I mean, it had, it had all the big, like, you know, elements of a movie like that. I think I think I was just, a, uh, I was able to appreciate it for what it was, despite the fact that fatigue and all that. You know what I mean? I was somewhat similar. Like, I was more willing to appreciate it for what it was. Um, especially coming off of uh, Blade Runner 2049, we were talking about Villeneuve had a four-hour cut, and... Mm cut it down to whatever its current runtime is of let's just say two and a half hours. And when someone was like, will you ever release the Villeneuve cut? He's like, no, I, this is the movie. And the four hour cut was, was indulgent and there was stuff that needed to be cut. And I feel like, I feel like you could, you could probably knock a half an hour out of this and it would probably be tighter. And I, and I don't think I have a huge gripe in this particular case, because he literally was given $70 million to be indulgent. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the movie was to be indulgent, but I I do feel like you could knock 20, 30 minutes off and it would have tightened it up. What, what 20 to 30 minutes would you knock out of this? Not to be a total wise ass, but if you just like had all of the slow-mo scenes at normal speed, it probably would have knocked 10 minutes off of the movie, you know, like (laughs) some good wise assery, but yeah. It's true. I think I think that wise as comment makes it clear what I mean by some of the indulgence. Like that's that's what I mean. Like nothing narratively comes to mind, but like yeah, you could have it could have had his pencil sharpened a little bit. But interesting. I don't know. Right. On. I feel like one of the biggest issues here is how reactive DC were to the Marvel success, and I feel like if they pulled their heads out of their asses and like charted their own course, they'd probably be in a much better spot now than they are. Um, I feel like, yeah, that's a good comment. I just feel like the first, the first hour, like an hour into this movie, or maybe the first third of the movie, I was just like, this is four hours because they skipped fucking eight movies. You know, Marvel, the MCU is like 20 fucking eight movies. And then like, that was just kind of like an initial reaction. And then when I thought about it more, like there actually are a bunch of movies and like, maybe I was being a little bit out of whack there, but the fact that like, you know. They came out with the I have a real fucking soft spot for um, Brandon Routh, Superman. I think that's a fucking really good movie. And it really? did. I fucking love that movie. I think that's an excellent wow. Superman movie. Huh? And I think that the, the fact that it wasn't action packed and failed totally changed the direction that DC went. And they ended up making all these fucking action packed copycat Marvel bullshitty movies that each did worse and worse and worse to the point where they like stripped you know a huge chunk out of batman superman they ended up bringing whedon onto this one after the tragedy in snyder's family and then they fucking made made whedon cut like an hour out of his movie like it was just tons and tons of meddling which we've talked about yeah a lot of other, bad another franchise for sure so <clears throat> i just mm. think it's kind of ironic that they like brought in Whedon to fucking make the shit show that was this movie. And then they give it back to Snyder and he makes a movie that's essentially an hour shorter than the two, uh, Avengers infinity war and Endgame run times, you know, like they ended up in the same fucking place, but they just fucked it up at every step, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, your comment about the Ralph Superman, I, now I want to rewatch that movie. I think, um, my, my take on it was that, you know, they, they did bail, but like, they they really kept the re, it was like a relaunch you know reboot whatever they were they kept it really under the radar which was a good thing and I don't think they really got what I don't think they knew what they had and I don't think they knew it was going to do that good and then 
Dark Knight comes out the same year that Iron Man and Iron Man and and the Hulk basically kick off the whole Marvel thing. So I don't know. I think in the sense that like they didn't really know what they had until the Dark Knight came out and it just blew up, like sure. exploded. You know what I mean? But then they blew and it after kind of after the well, exactly. Then they were blue. scrambling, and they're like, you know, we got to do X. We do, you know, what do we do? <laughs> you know, what do we do? What do we do? And um, they just, yeah, bad decisions for sure. So I, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling you there. In terms of this of this actual movie, I, I don't think I would call this a nugget because it would be kind of silly to leave it to the end of the show. But I was kind of interested to see that zero frames shot by Whedon are in this movie according to uh, Snyder. Yeah, I th- well, that's, I like that. I like it too. I just think it's interesting. It's a little bit, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I don't what? know. It's just interesting. It's a little interesting that like how much of this is um, shit that he had already shot and there's all mm-hmm. of the differences mm-hmm. were just new random reshoots because evidently he only shot like maybe five minutes of runtime. Yeah, I just read that this morning. Which is really wild. It means that, like, I, almost every fucking second of this thing, he shot back in the day, and it was just left on the cutting room floor. It's just kind of interesting. It's amazing to me that a whole two hours worth were left on the cutting room floor. Mm. You know what I mean? And then he resurrected it all for this cut of this movie. I generally agree with what you said a minute ago about the... Like, I, I understand what you're saying, Benny, that four hours is definitely fucking long as fuck. But at the same time, I, I do tend to agree that they took a little bit of time and breathing room to ramp up to the story versus the theatrical mm. cut, which was just like, hey, maybe we should get together. OK, now we're together. OK, now we save the world. The end, you know, like you need a little bit of time, but there's still nothing there, though. No, no, it's still a very vanilla there's just, story. There's nothing there, man. The members of the team have zero chemistry, mm. fucking zero it's so forced and fake and shitty and you can say what you want about the familiar humor, blah, 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 and the Marvel movies. But at least it seemed like the people that were in the fucking team together had some kind of an, an affinity for each other. Yeah. This is just like, what? <sighs> yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it like that. You know, I know people were like excited about Dark Side, and this is my problem with DC. You have a fucking villain named after a John Cafferty song. <laughs> and then the other villain is named after a fucking Herman Hess novel. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how are these, like, who are these guys? Why do they matter? Uh, I don't know, man. It just. <laughs> and that circles back to two dudes in an office in a high rise smoking, like ashtrays full of butts in the 60s being like, let's make some villains. You know, the boss says we need six more villains today, you know? Yeah, right. Because that's when these fucking characters were made. Was the band named after the guy, the character, or the character named after the band? It's a no, bro. Uh, I think the band was named after the novel. Got it. And I don't know what the character was named after. <laughs> it would be funny if it was named after the band, though. Well, that's kind of what I assumed. Like, I, I was thinking, like, what you just said, Chad, but take cigarettes away and insert Get your weed. motor running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Head on they, my highway. Like, Dude, tame this villain after the band Steppenwolf, man. That would be sweet. Not so much. I mean, I, I will say, all right, so where do we, this is, there's a lot of material here. Where, where do we, I liked it. We, we could do? transition right to the villains. I, I actually liked the CG of the villain. I liked that, like, he was groveling to his boss, trying to get back into the, you know, the great lord's good graces stuff, even though it's super mm-hmm. vanilla. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah right on. He's He's got to conquer 150,000 word worlds. Like, that's his debt. Like, that's fucking pretty heavy. <laughs> I, I think what was working there was the intent, you know? Like, yeah. he, he had a, mi- like, he had a purpose and he had a mission, and he was c- totally committed to it. So, that's why I think that that worked for Steppenwolf. But um, just to talk about it, the comparison between the two films, like I asked you to um, uh, throw that the original cut in there, Chad. I watched it, and man, the differences between that character in those two movies are staggering. Yeah, like the original version, he, he looks different. He's smaller. He's a paper cutout in the original cut. Yeah, he's just weak and ineffectual, and I, I remember watching it a couple of years ago and thinking how 
just terrible he was as a villain. But when I watched him in this movie, I was like, wow, this is great. Like, he's larger, he's more imposing, like he's a, you know, very formidable foe in terms of fighting. Mm. The original cut was like a Lord Marshall knockoff. And Lord, Lord Marshall would have kicked the original dude's ass. Try like a, a JV Lord Marshall Jr. Yeah, exactly. knockoff. Like, with extra weak sauce added in there. This one was like... <laughs> Way better. And the armor was way better, too. It was kind of like a living, spiky armor that kind of moved with him, you know? Like I, And they made him, like, 9 or 10 feet tall or 12 feet tall, which was great, you know? Like, exactly what some kind of intergalactic villain like that should be like, you know what I mean? Even if it's vanilla, that's what it should be like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm putting the vanilla aside. Like, we, yeah, I think yeah. we already have established the vanilla, you know quality of the film like you know the story is sort of whatever so fine but like the execution by snyder of steppenwolf was uh, like 10x what it was in the first film no Mm. question about it and it made it way more enjoyable because he was such a central figure in the film you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so so that i did really really like a lot actually dark side i don't i don't really know much about dark side except he's like kind of like apocalypse from the x-men you know that same level of multi intergalactic yeah. dimensional quantum villain and he's named after the theme song to eddie and the cruisers <laughs> there you go on the dark side <laughs> oh yeah on the dark side Again, guys smoking weed in an office. <laughs> yep. Now, maybe, maybe on second thought, it was Steppenwolf the band. Maybe. Either way, dude, your point is completely valid. I get it. You know, we're gonna call him Dark Side, but we'll spell it S E I D. <laughs> dude, that's metal. It's <laughs> so metal, man. Fucking cerebral writing over at DC. Yeah, really. <laughs> guys are geniuses. You know what? Nathan Explosion is more metal than Dark Side. And let's be real here. It's true. It's it's more believable. It's yeah, better. Just I would have uh yeah. If it was intergalactic Nathan Explosion. Like I'm picturing Dark Side's body with Nathan Explosion's head and the hair blowing in the wind, like standing at the at the hatch of that ship before he jumps down. <laughs> yeah. And, but he's <laughs> jumping down into Atlantis with the, uh, they've licensed Mermaider and he just like slaughters mermaids. I would totally watch that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Mermaiders. Now that would change my mind about this movie. That's, that's the kind of change that it didn't get between the two versions <laughs> that it really needed. I definitely don't think we need to go into a huge amounts of detail here, but I think a brief touching on a couple of the hero characters um, has some value because, like, for example, Cyborg doesn't really exist in the original cut, and it's nice to see him get a little bit of story, even though it's the dreaded origin story and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but, I mean, look, I yeah, the dreaded origin story, but I, I I really feel like this one, they did it in a way that he integrated it into the story instead of making it, like, such a huge, draggy production. Like... We've seen with so many Batman origins and so many Spider-Man origins. And I liked how, you know, we got a couple of flashbacks, a couple of conversations with dad that were relevant to the origin and relevant to the story at hand. And then it's like, and we're moving on. And his dad dies, which like there's actual stakes. And he he gave a waitress money. Sweet ATM, brah. That was interesting. That was pretty sweet. That was a nice thing to do. That's what a hero would do, Ben. Come on, man. Uh, it just seems like, uh, you know, they're trying to do some exposition on his moral compass or something. And just, I don't know, man. Again, DC. Cyborg? That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ray Fisher and, you know, I, I thought he did a great job. I just, again, like Cyborg. <laughs> okay. I agree. It's a, It's kind of not a great name. I can't believe how fucking short straw he got on the uh, theatrical cut. Like, he probably would have shot all this shit and been like, this is my fucking breakthrough. And then he has like four minutes in the goddamn theatrical cut. It was pretty rough. Yeah, that was terrible. No, I like how he was more central in this movie, like created by a mother box and then, you know, 
with actual stakes. His dad dies, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, and he's like critical to the end too, like him and Flash doing the like speed of light thing. I I was so like, what the fuck at the end of the theatrical cut, where it was like, all right, so like we go and we like push the three boxes apart, and then like all of uh, the fucking flying monkeys will get mad and eat the wicked witch at the end, and like that's it, and like. Really? That's the end of the theatrical cut? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's terrible, dude. And the whole, um, well, I don't, not to harp on the theatrical cut, but the whole, like, Russian family living dude. underneath the tower in Chernobyl was what just the fuck? so dumb, man. So dumb. So dumb. Oh, my God. It was nice that, like, the um, the Aquaman stuff, they didn't dwell on it too long, and, like, there was the Aquaman movie later, which I was not a fan of, but at least they didn't have, like, fucking 40 minutes of aquaman origin story in this one thank god yeah and similarly like wonder woman would have already been out at this stage i think yes wonder woman came out before the theatrical cut if i'm not mistaken right correct correct so that would have already been taken care of we've seen 75 batmans i mean buried too many of them benny knows all about that need to bury some more and then fucking superman had those two kind of shitty lead-ups into this i need to bury all the batmans bury all of the batmans (laughs) What was what, did the did the kid that played Flash was there like a show that oh. he was in or something like what what was that was one of my main gripes when the like when the movie was announced because I started watching the uh, Arrowverse on uh, the CW like when it started like so I watched Arrow and then the Flash came out you know in the in the first few seasons and. Um, there was a, a team up show as well that was pretty good. Like we're we're good, we're really good. And I thought Grant Gustin was really good as the Flash. And when I saw that they were casting somebody completely different, like I, I don't know, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I like the I like the continuity in Marvel where they have the same actors playing the same parts. Like TV or movie, done. yeah, exactly. Like don't have two different actors playing the same character. I mean, at this point, DC. It's going to start losing its grip with so many ba- <laughs> so many Batmans. <laughs> there's a lot of Batmans, dude. God, there's, there's too many Batmans. I haven't buried all of them, but there's too many Batmans. I mean, there's like, I'm all about different Batman stories. I'm all about different superhero stories. I'm all about different takes on different characters. But I think DC, where they're at, I don't think that's the smartest move. You know, oh, yeah. I'm still excited to see the new Batman movie, but I don't think that's the strongest move. And I'm I curious, that, dude. I don't know how if I'm excited. I'm curious to see what they do. No, I'm 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 pretty excited, man. I I, I was pretty hot on Pattinson after Tenant, dude. I really liked Fuck, him. In Tenet. I'm gonna have to watch this thing, aren't I? <laughs> well, don't don't think about it now, man. Don't think about it now. <laughs> It'll just make you more grumpy. <laughs> yeah, don't don't torture yourself, man. I don't I don't think <laughs> it'll be a while. You won't have to do it for a while. Exactly. I think that uh just just let, just stay on the flash for a second. Like I I really that really bothered me. And and Ezra Miller like I don't know anything about him surprisingly for me. I he's um, in a couple but, he's in uh we need to talk about Kevin which is a really interesting kind of like school shootery movie. He's a good actor. Oh, okay. I agree with uh, you Benny yeah. that I he didn't do the best here probably not his fault more the writer's fault but um yeah. No, I think it was mostly the writing but you know, they were trying to use him for a lot of comic relief, and it was just horrible. Yeah. It was just, it, was just, it just fell so fucking flat. It was so bad. There were some uh, non-comedic moments that I enjoyed with him. I liked the hot dog truck one. Whatever. I liked that scene. The slow-mo girlfriend convertible thing. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. That was, that was well done. I really liked that a lot. The guy trying to get the hamburger and the dogs and all that. It was great. It was a great intro to Barry, you know, and again, like, thankfully, we didn't have to sit through an entire origin story with Barry. And yeah, the humor was a little flat, but, you know, I, I, I guess the best way for me to say this is that I appreciated what they were trying to do. And I appreciate Ezra Miller's attempt to kind of lighten some of it up. And it worked because he was like the youngest of the bunch, you know, I felt like that played against the darker tone of the rest of it pretty well. But it's the Tom Holland you know, Spider-Man I, thing. It's the kid again being excited. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But again, you know, it was, I, I don't know. I feel like at this point they should have just left the humor out and kept it dark. I mean, the movie's, the more, the movie's literally dark <laughs> and totally dark. It's like, just make it dark and be done with it. You know what I mean? I think there was a, there was a couple of funny moments throughout the movie, but 
just that a couple. I uh, I want to propose. Well, I want to propose two things. One, I think Benny, you should be able to pick like the three movies we do before we do the new Batman. So you'll at least have had a chance to talk about shit you want to talk about for a few weeks in advance. That might help s- smooth things out a little bit. <laughs> but the- <laughs> it's funny that you think that that's the case. <laughs> but it won't work. <laughs> But the other thing I want to propose, I said earlier, and like, other than Diane Lane and Kevin Costner, I pretty much disagree with every single casting in all three of the uh, Snyder's but oh Superman God. movies. Let's get this into movie. this, man. Tell what? What is it that you disagree? I'm dying <laughs> to hear this, man. Go. I, d- I don't have anything against any of the actors. Like, I love Cavill. I, you know, I, I appreciate all the actors. Um, Irons is as Alfred. Like I love Jeremy Irons, but totally not as Alfred. That's just fucking weird. Why? I don't know. I just he's, he's not old enough. He's not Michael Caine. No, no, he's just um. <laughs> I don't know. I think like <laughs> I think maybe specifically it's a combination of up until Michael Caine was cast as Alfred. Alfred had always literally been the butler. Uh, yes. And like Michael Caine's character was like a little bit more helpful and a little bit more, you know, I don't know, wingman y to Batman. Mm-hmm. And then like mm-hmm. this dude is like fucking Batman's mechanic. And like, it's, I just, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get it. Yes. Okay. So like, I think me saying I don't like any of the castings is strictly my opinion. And a million people could poke a million holes in it. So like, I'm not going to try and like convince anyone of this, but you know, I think Lois, I don't like, I don't like Amy Adams as Lois. I like Amy Adams. I just don't like her as Lois. Well, she was better than what's her face from the Routh movie. See, yeah, see, I disagree. What? I don't know. I like how feisty Lois is in this EPD paradox, but I think maybe also though, like, I think a lot of it comes back to DC. A lot of it comes back to like Lois is always the damsel in distress because the shit was written in the thirties. So like, yeah, right. Right. Even with a Amy Adams and even with her being feisty and even with her doing this, that and the other hardcore journalism, the characters still like fucking falling off of buildings every three minutes and needing to get caught, you know, like it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of cast and, and just, character stuff yeah i don't know man i i agree with what you're saying about the falling off the building stuff and and the damsel in distress i feel like they they did it right by layering in the damsel in distress and making her not just such a bottle of weak sauce where she Mm. just was so weepy and helpless you know as women were portrayed back then you know weepy and helpless you know like so i don't know i think i think they did a, a Like, in the sense that they connected it to how he felt about her. Like, he was so taken with her, man, you know, and so in love with her. And that's what really, I think they they presented that well enough that that made the glue between the two of them work and some of those bits with Lois work. But I I see what you're saying, for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess to be a little bit more specific, it's like the major characters. Like, I, I actually like Godot as Wonder Woman quite a bit. and. Same cyborg dude, like seems like a per- perfectly capable actor. Flash actor, I have no issue with. There was obviously a writing issue. Like, it's really just like bat, like Ben Affleck, Batman, dude. Like Ben Affleck, Batman can go fuck himself. What? <laughs> what? I, just don't, I just do not like Ben. Affleck. I like Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's fine. Not as fucking Batman. It's just fucking weird. Wow, it's just weird. <laughs> Why? What's so weird about it? I Everything. mean, I think all of it. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know, Benny, back me up here. What sucks about Ben Affleck yeah, Batman? Yeah, tell me. I want to hear this, man. Everybody wants to hear this. The fans want to hear all this. So so lay it out, dudes, you guys. Well, number one, the, you know, Batman, Batman killing people. Yeah. Not cool. I just, I don't know, yep. man. He does you know, it's, Ben Affleck's fine. I just don't, uh, you know, like, um, what's her face? Amy Adams is totally fine. I like her as an actress. I just don't. I can't, I don't envision her as Lois. I like the way the Lois character is written in these movies. Same. I think she does a good job, but there's just something about her in that role that doesn't sell Lois to me. Agreed. And it's, there's something just, you know, at, yeah, at foundation level about Batflex, Bathman that uh, (laughs) has the same effect with me. I just don't buy him. 
I just don't buy him in the role at all. I think yeah. one way. I don't one think he's way. doing anything to Hold on, Chad. improve upon that base assumption or to, or to bring me into his court. I, I like what you just said about Lois. I think it's the best way it's been said here so far. And and I agree with that. And I'm a fan of Amy Adams like you guys. Yeah, so, same. you know, I see her as Lois and I'm like, oh, man, yeah, right. Awesome. You know, but. Now that I'm thinking about it, like, yeah, we, we, they, they probably could have got somebody different in there and it might have worked a little bit better. And again, no guff on her. Affleck, I think, and this is really after watching this, this cut the second time through. Like, uh, Jesus, Clortho and I talked, I watched it two and then a half times. Yeah. Wow. Well, I watched the first, the first one I did was when we, we got it a f- few weeks back. So Vince and I had talked about, Batman versus Superman a lot. And I really liked um, Affleck's Batman in Superman, Batman versus Superman. Like when I heard he was going to be Batman, I was like everybody else on the internet. I was like, no! But when I saw it, <laughs> I, I dug the older Batman. I, I agree about the killing. No, it shouldn't be like that. It fits with him being uh, at the end, though. Like, I don't know. It was it was like they were like, oh, we're going to take the whole Dark Knight thing and just, like, put that everywhere. You know, Dialed like, up, I didn't yeah. like that. You know, like, that was kind of like, eh. But, you know, because it was a sen- in the sense of, like, oh, well, this is the most popular thing, so let's just throw this everywhere and everybody will love Batman more. It's like, no, dude. You know, so I didn't dig that. I liked Affleck as Batman in that movie, Batman versus Superman. I didn't like him as much in this movie. And I don't know why that is because of the jankety nature in which these two movies were made. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think there, it was, you know, similar to what you said about Lois Ben, like something about the way his character was written in this, this one, I don't think was nearly as good as in Batman versus Superman. So uh, feeling you and not feeling you there. Like I, I was definitely disappointed. You know, I, I, I liked some of the action scenes with I liked the you know most of the action scenes with him in this, but something was off for sure, no doubt. I think the thing were you about to say something, Benny? I don't know if I no pre cut you off. No, I just I, <laughs> I heard I heard somebody say something, and I, it might have been the end of what you were saying. No, I didn't. Um, it was a quantum echo. I think the thing that was missing is Bruce Wayne is smooth. I think all the way back to Michael Keaton, mm. and probably even Kilmer, and certainly Clooney, like. Bruce Wayne is a smooth, wealthy playboy. And also eccentric and weird, too. It has some eccentricities, you know, is a bit weird, whatever. I, I don't think Ben Affleck is able to be smooth. He just isn't smooth. He's just a fucking kid from Dorchester, you know, like. Dorchester? So my, my dad grew up there. Like, it's just, you know, it's just, he just has the, it's just the X factor is missing, I think, for me. Mm. I agree with you about the smoothness. He he's I mean look, I think Ben is a great actor and I think that he's yeah. been doing his the best work he's ever done in the last 10 years like directing these movies. And it's usually a grittier person or it's usually like a more normal person. Yeah, he's got tons of accolades from all these films that he's directed, Gone Girl, uh the, I'm a huge fan of The Town. Yeah, sure. Argo's fantastic, and his acting work in those films is just incredible. And, you know, again, I loved him in Batman versus Superman, but you're right. This one, it's not the same. I think it's more the writing, but I also agree that it's – he's not – he doesn't have that, like, suave quality. He's not charming. Like, period. And it's not a knock against him. It's just not his thing, man. You know, mm. like, Bale had it. Like, Bale had the, like – you know, acting totally weird and being smooth at the same time and being vulnerable. You know what I mean? It worked great. Similar with Keaton and Kilmer, for that matter. You know? I think a smooth mm-hmm. Batman, a smooth Bruce Wayne would have been able to bring a Justice League team together in a more cohesive manner. He was just like fucking groveling with these various to meta be fair, persons. he's not written as a smooth Batman in this. He's written as like a crotchety kind of, you know. Brooding. Yeah, they were like, yeah. we got to make him brooding like the Dark Knight. But I feel like a, I feel like a Connery, like Connery, in based on like what you see in here, like he was smooth as a young young man playing Bond. He was smooth as a crotchety old fuck in in um all of his later movies. You know, like I think like a, a person's ability to to have a smoothness like carries through. 
they'd be a salty fucker, but they'd still be charming, I guess, you know? So I, I still feel like even if the Batman character is meant to be like super jaded and super nihilistic and super cynical, they would probably still have a little spark in there, you know? I don't know. I'm really reaching here, but maybe. But I think I think Ben's comment is 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 right on the money, man. Because uh, you know he he what that is how he was written. They wrote him wrote him as the brooding, dark, nighty Batman, not the other kinds of levels of Batman that we've seen over the years. You know what I mean in the comics and in the films. So. Mm. You know, like I could very easily say based on what Ben just said that like, you know, Affleck was playing to what was written and that's how the character was written. So in that respect. But on that note, then I would argue that there also isn't a lot of separation between Batman and Bruce Wayne in this. Yeah, there's not or there is. There's not. not yeah. There's virtually no separation. Exactly. It's like he's always both, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with you. And I think um, one thing I definitely did like was from and this was from the previous film and in this one is that they use that cool voice modulator to change his voice instead of like using a lower voice. I'm Batman. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I can totally see your chin tucked into your sternum there. <laughs> I, should, I should have videoed myself so you could see it <laughs> with the stash. It looks great. Yeah, totally. Uh, jumping back a little bit, though, yeah, like as far as the identity thing goes, the like even one of you know Flash's lame, shitty jokes is a, in regards to you know, oh, it's the bat signal. That's for you. Oh shit, sorry, I didn't want to give you give you away. You know, like it just oh, it's like that. It's like even referential in the movie. How little they care about it in this one. I think both of you are right that we are the way that the character was written here was accurately portrayed on screen and whatever. But like, I feel like the writers wrote themselves into a corner where if Batman yes. is just a crotchety fuck, yes, then he is not going to be able to get the team together. And then Steppenwolf shows up and fucking blows up the world and nobody wins and everyone fucking dies. So maybe that's good for the show because it's, you know, true to the title of the show. But like, there's no movie with Batman written the way he was, in my opinion. Yeah, I no, I'm with you, Chad. I think that... Um, and I think it's, it totally echoes what you said, Benny, about how there was no team cohesion. Like, there's no believability to the team. Yeah, no no team cohesion. No, you're right. You, you, it's a good point, man. And I think, like... All right, so let me posit this. No chemistry. None. For brooding Batman the way we got him in this movie, they would have been better off having... Batman visit all these people instead of Bruce Wayne. In fact, sure. I don't know why they didn't do that. Like, that's such a Batman thing to like ninja into like Flash's secret hideout and to be like, just pop out of nowhere. I mean, that's the way that he would do it, man. And he's so like man of few words and all of this sort of thing. Like, that's totally the way they should have done it instead of, you know, Bruce Wayne driving around in his like futuristic Mercedes. Mm. And on horseback, you know, like visiting all these people and being like, I heard a story about a guy who brings everybody fish and the king tide was last. Totally. Night. Yeah. Can I get another oh, drink? <laughs> and then are you Arthur Curry? Because I think you're are here's twenty five thousand dollars. Can we go outside and talk for a few minutes? I'm going to die. Uh, Oh, my God. As opposed to, like, a fucking total, like, bat submarine bat meeting in the fucking aquarium. You know, that would have been, like, Dude, so... Dude, a keep bat up. submarine would have been the tits, man. I would love to have seen that. It would have been cheesy that, as that fuck. That whole but. scene in the fishing village just... Talk about something that could have been trimmed. Ugh, it wasn't good <laughs> in go. either of the cuts. So bad. So bad. I mean... Yeah, like, why isn't he Batman? And B, why the fuck is Aquaman making fun of Batman for dressing like a bat? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. What fucking sense does that make? You know, Aquaman, who's universally known as the lamest of superheroes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no coming back, man. Is making fun of Batman for dressing like a bat. I can never get out of my head. But then, uh, then the village ahead. woman goes up and picks up his sweater and sniffs of it deeply while she's singing her village woman song with the oh singing her fucking bjork song god <laughs> so stupid creepy just creepy 
You know, it's like he it's like he left his underwear behind and she's yeah. like, <laughs> and like getting ran away. Like it was terrible, dude. dude. What the fuck? Bjork? It was terrible. And then a- adding adding the Bjork song, the vill- the the Bjork um village singing on top of that made it even creepier. So just no. I kind of like that, but I mean, I don't know. I can see both sides of it. You know, like an extended cut of the village scene is not what we needed. No. You know, too many, too many village people. Too many ah. Batman's. Oh, oh. oh, there's probably a dad death in there. It's a death. I threw myself on the on the. I threw myself on the spear for that. What was that selling? What was what selling? What was the purpose of that? Of the the you know. The women of the village going down to the water as he's swimming away and singing him a song. Like, what the fuck is the purpose of that? So that they can be like, there goes the fabled Aquaman. He is a mythical creature who helps us. Dude, that's a back to back to back dude. Bro. That's the best answer I got. Is it supposed to like <laughs> add gravitas to his, you know, his charitable, uh, you know, fish donations to the village. <laughs> like, what? This is pre-Aquaman. Wait, wait, hold on. I forgot what my death was already. <laughs> That's how blown out I am. <laughs> uh, the village what? people? You fucking dildo? Thank you, yes. <laughs> wait, what? I <laughs> said so the village people, you fucking dildo. <laughs> the village people, you dildo. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like the the uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull a Kev here and defend the Ninja Turtles until you yell at me about it. But like, I feel like the village scene was meant to, as you said, Benny, give a little bit of gravitas to Aquaman because this is pre Aquaman. It was shot before the Aquaman movie came out. I don't know how good of a job it does, but man, that Aquaman movie was fucking bad, though. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like Flash is... Uh, I don't need to know. I think you're making my point for me, so I don't know. Oh, I'm not arguing again. I just feel like that's what they were going for. I don't know for. what was good about it. They might have failed. I kind of feel... Uh, wait, sorry. What? No. Oh, okay. Should I go... Go ahead. Can I talk? <laughs> <laughs> Kev's imploding in the middle of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like we're we're getting some good, uh, good, good steam here. I think that... um. I feel like at this point in the show, the maybe Ben is kind of like Papa Palpatine, and now I'm starting to hate this movie. <laughs> 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 like I, I don't like. Now I'm thinking more about this and and this village scene in particular. And okay, so here's some here's some like straight up great gripe gripes of Kev. No dust, nothing like that. But okay, so. The storm is so bad. There's icebergs in the harbor. We know that. The storm is terrible. No choppers can get in and out of there. I mean, I don't know where this village is. It's like in the the worst place on the planet, right? And then the the guy in the bar is like, oh, he climbed over the mountain. It's like, but he's totally clean. His jacket looks like he bought it yesterday. And he's got a horse. Like, what did he drag the horse up the mountain? Like, (laughs) <laughs> What's up with that, man? You know what I mean? And like, I, again, like he looks. Alfred was up at the top of the cliff with a winch and pulley, just <laughs> doing down. all the work. <laughs> Catherine the Great, just you know. And then it's like his jacket looks brand new. He looks like he just had a fresh shower the entire time of the scene. So it's like you don't look like you just spent two days climbing over a mountain, you know. And then he returns on a helicopter. I didn't get that either. Like, where was the helicopter? <laughs> I got, I got nothing to tell you there, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. I did like how the bat, the bat jumbo jet was black. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on your gripe motorcycle there, buddy. Very, very nearly black. So yeah, I agree. Like if, if you're gonna cut anything, cut the village scene. Like why is Zen? Why is Aquaman making fun of Batman? I mean, every time I think of Aquaman, all I think about is the Super Friends, right? And it's always like. <laughs> Aquaman summoning a school of fish. <laughs> yep. This is so terrible, dude. Aquaman. I mean, I wish, I, I like Jason Momoa and all, but I, I kind of wish that that was what they went with, you know? Like, trying to coolify Aquaman is just not, it's not working. Dude, the, the coolest not, Aquaman not only that, ben, in all cinematic universes is the deep. Oh, you just totally stole my thunder, dude. You know who cool Aquaman is? 
what Namor? <laughs> yeah, he is Namor, and I think that Namor like, is cool Aquaman. Yeah, I was gonna say, Chad, that uh, the Deep is cooler than Aquaman. Like the Deep is so screwed up and like should be locked in Arkham Asylum, and he is cooler than Aquaman. Totally. You know, you know what, you know what would have been great for the the village mountain scene. What? Is if when Bruce Wayne got to the top of the hill, there was like a tr- semi-translucent glowing uh, Ace Ventura sitting lotus style floating in the air. Going, <laughs> oh, 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 righty there. Pretty much, man. <laughs> it's about how plausible the whole thing was. It would have been a welcome addition to the soundtrack. It didn't really bother me. Uh, to, be, to be totally honest, the village people like, <laughs> scene didn't really bother me at the time. <laughs> You giggling about Ben said, I think he said that would have been a great addition to the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, that's a good transition uh, to the uh, a segue to the soundtrack. I just, I think, um, in another example of Junkie XL, whoever the real dude's name is, did the soundtrack for this movie and then they like booted him off the movie. Whedon got somebody else in and then they were able to put, you know. They were like, hey, Junkie XL, you want to come back and do the Snyder Cut? And he did a whole new fucking soundtrack. He didn't even reference his old stuff, which is just kind of a cool little nugget and cool to see the yeah. guy that I got originally hired got to actually do his job. Yeah, no doubt, man. I I, I dug it. I think that um, I, I liked how they used the various different, you know, kind of themes, the musical themes for the characters, you know, they layered those in there, you know, when they were doing something. No, didn't like that. <laughs> like ululating female vocals that popped up every time Wonder, <laughs> Wonder Woman, Woman, Woman came comes on in. screen got to be a bit much. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, you mean the, you the ancient ancient lamentations? Cobra. It was the Cobra la 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 and the dude from uh, Kung Pao Into the Fist. Mm. And the ululating of the Chichitook. There you go. Even better. I think that uh, I don't know. I I liked. I didn't. I didn't dig the overuse of the ancient lamentation music. I was just talking about that kind of that Wonder Woman, you know, kind of guitar riffy theme, and then the you know Superman had his own music too. Like I, I they, they, it was subtly layered in in parts, and I liked that. That's all. The other stuff I wasn't nuts about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm not even particularly you know, commenting on whether I liked or disliked the soundtrack so much as I just. I can't get over how brutally the soundtrack and music artists are treated. We're just like, yeah, now we're punting you. Oh, you're done with your soundtrack? Yeah, now you're fired. It's just like, fucking ow, dude. <laughs> like, they're just completely disregarded sometimes, and I just find that crazy. Well, we talked about that a little bit on the Blade Runner episode. Yeah, but just like, it's, I just, I guess the reason I find it crazy is just the guy, the people that do the music would have covered thousands of hours, and it's just like in the fucking trash can, you know? Anyways. Well, I mean, they get paid, so... Well, I know, but... You know, it's... I mean, what's the way of the, the nature of the business, man? It's the way it's, it is. You know, it's like Eric Stoltz on Back to the Future, dude. You know, he, sure. he shot, like, a full, almost quarter of the movie, and then he was like... They were like, yeah, you're not right for the part. It's like, okie doke. Just take my bag of money and leave. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, it's frustrating, you know? It's like, when you put that much time and creative energy into something, you know, just turn around and have it kind of throw on the floor in the can, whatever. Yeah, I get what you're saying. If uh, if you'll allow it, I want a Graves of Kev slash everybody Kev's just a quick hit list of other cast people that I was just like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Please just, continue your cast. Just in the, like, flame. we don't, I don't necessarily want to dig in per se, but, like, Jesse Eisenberg, I think, is a great actor. I just don't understand why there's a 12-year-old Lex Luthor, like, yeah, I never got that either, man. Why I the mean, f- he did a good fuck job, is J. Jonah but... Jameson, Commissioner Gordon? Like, what? Is, what the fuck was that about? I love J.K. Well, Simmons, K- but like, what the so fuck? So do I. You don't think he was good for Gordon? I just, as soon as I saw him, I was like, J. Jonah Jameson, what? You're not selling any papers, bro? Like, I just, it was confusing. It's weird. I guess. I don't know. That's Willem Dafoe was kind of weird as fucking saggy face merman. It was just weird. He has a yeah. He has a large part in the Aquaman. No, I know. I I, I know, and I don't. I don't know. It's just weird. All all of the castings are weird. Even Cavill, dude. I know you guys are huge Cavill fans. I just don't. 
I don't buy him as Superman. I totally buy him as the Witcher. That's probably the most contentious thing I, I could say on the show. But That's pretty contentious. I buy him as both. I like him as Superman. I thought he was a great choice, and I loved him as the Witcher because he's totally different. I mm-hmm. loved him when he was a kid in Count of Monte Cristo, which we touched Dude, on that in was another great. episode yeah. recently. Yeah. You know? Uh, he was great. So, yeah, I guess I, I see what you're saying. I mean, I think uh, Ray Fisher's Cyborg was good. I like Godot as Wonder Woman. We already talked about Baffleck enough. Um, who else? Alfred. I didn't realize I, that I Kieran could... Hines did Steppenwolf's voice, which is cool. I love Kieran Hines. Yeah, he's great. Who else was in this movie? I said it earlier. High five to Shaky Diane Simmons. Lane and Costner, who wasn't in this one. But Definitely. They were great. Diane Lane, great. And I like J.K. Simmons in this. I mean, I don't know. I get what you're saying, but. I mean, you could sort of say the same thing about Defoe. Like Defoe plays Volko, but it's like he's a Green Goblin dude. Mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, you could do, you could go down that road. But I liked, I liked him as Volko, and you know, Aquaman being Aquaman, I still like Momoa. He's, a, I like him. He's just good. I like Momoa, but I, I, I hadn't thought about it in the same way that you mentioned, Penny, until you said it. But I totally think I'm riding on that motorcycle of punk rock, fucking. Pirates of the Caribbean and Aquaman is weird. It's a little weird, but I think it's like I think it's it's, it's obvious how hard they're trying to coolify Aquaman. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That is it. Is it working? Which instead yeah. they could have leaned into it and made Aquaman be like the comic relief. They could have instead of Flash. Yeah. You know, Flash. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I think there are better ways to handle it, and that's it. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling you there. That might have been better to do the as the comic relief. I mean, we had a pretty funny flash beat down a couple like a month ago or whatever, you know, with the whole <laughs> sandwiches at the picnic. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, and I, I couldn't stop thinking about uh speedsters when I was watching this and just how kind of dumb they are. I mean fucking stupid they are. Yeah, it's really more of a support character is what I was I kind of kept thinking about, you know, like it's a support character. He's not like he's not really there to like beat people up. He's there to like get people out of the burning building and like, you know, build up enough charge, which he did two or three times in this movie to jumpstart somebody's car. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. The Batmobile's not working. Hang on. Hang on. I'm not supposed to break this rule. This is my biggest rule. That I break seven times. Not to break the time barrier, but I'm going to run around in a circle until I reach the critical mass of breaking the time travel barrier, and then I'm going to touch your car battery, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. (laughs) This is really important. Because we really need to get to (laughs) 7-Eleven. No? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. (laughs) I'm with you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just lost in reverie of how stupid it is that he can run faster than the speed of light. (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, my other gripe about The Flash is, like, defying the TV show and the comics. Like, why is his lightning blue? It's been yellow forever. Like, why on earth did they change the color of his lightning? I, I mean, because love that as a gripe of Kev. That's quasi that. useless. It fits Snyder's and... color palette better. Mm. <laughs> okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that. I did like his suit. I thought that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Like, I liked that it was more like armor, you know, which would make sense for a character like that because he crashed a couple times, and I was like, "Damn, dude, like, yeah. that was kind of harsh." He ate shit pretty hard. Yeah, he did for sure for breakfast. I really liked the reveal, because I didn't see this coming, of uh, Harry Lennox being the Martian Manhunter. I thought that was pretty damn cool. Anybody? 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 That was interesting. I You probably saw this too, but it was actually supposed to be Green Lantern, but Warner Brothers cock-blocked it. Oh, yes, I did read that, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, for sure. No, I think it was that was cool. Like, he, he's sort of a... I never heard of Martian know. fucking Manhunter before, but evidently he was one of the... He actually was a founder of Justice League, whereas Cyborg was not. So I, I never knew any of that shit. Yes. I mean, I didn't, I don't know a lot about the character, but I, you know, it was cool of the inclusion. And I liked, you know, being a fan of Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman, like I liked that mm. we saw so much of that character in those two movies. And then to get this reveal was just awesome. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
I think we could probably transition this into a bits and bobs if you guys wanted to. Well, that, I mean, that's kind of a bit in the bob, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a bob. No, that's a death. Okay. No, no, that's it, man. I think that's the uh, that's the chapter marker right there. Hey, hey, yo. So the chapter markers in this one, when I edit it, are going to be Aquaman summoning a school of fish. <laughs> no, 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 no. The chapter markers in this, everyone needs to be a different ululating Amazonian sing-song. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How about that music combined with the Cobra Law scream? Wouldn't that yeah, be great? We, can, we can make that happen. We can do that. We can make anything happen. Okay, so... I, yeah, all right. Bits and bobs. Let's do it. Bits and bobs. Um, I can't decide how much I hate the mother box thing. It's just kind of like. What? Cl- Why? Well, that's what I'm saying. I can't decide because like on the one hand, okay, fine, whatever. And on the other hand, it's like three random fucking cubes like energy. They stole them from Optimus Prime, like three Energon cubes. Like it, it is from the. F- 60s i guess so like it's just is it's another example of something that somebody would have come up with in the 60s that you use in your movie in 2020 and it's just like really three cubes with like three fucking zombie witch doctor dudes standing behind it that like combine to make fucking planets turn to fire like really Ooh, they have a tesseract in marvel movies we need something like that yeah i don't know i just it's just interesting it's just an interesting it's interesting how often these tropes get retrod, you know? Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of the boxes being, you know, such an ancient and advanced technology, even beyond Darkseid and, and uh, Eddie and the Cruisers. <laughs> so, like, I like that that part of it. I also like how the mother box, like, woke up and created Cyborg. So he's, like, got this sort of interesting connection to the mother boxes. Like, I definitely like that part. Yeah, that was interesting. I definitely thought it was weird how he'd like shove the boxes into that weird slab of stone in the middle of that nuclear reactor. Then all of a sudden you can like talk to all his buddies. <laughs> it's like a prepaid right. calling card. <laughs> Actually, that's funny. You should say that because I was like, what the fuck is up with these? What's the deal with these mother boxes? And I read about it. What's the deal? And it turns out that and I shit you not that mother boxes. There's like this group of, I don't know, heroes or they're called the new gods. And dark side is one of the new gods and a new god that's born on this planet called apocalypse um if you're born on that planet you can make a mother box and the mother box takes on your personality blah 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 but what a mother box actually is is like a fucking it's literally a smartphone it's like a god smartphone what which is just like that's dumb so maybe that's why I'm kind of salty on it cuz it's just uh, weird mind you this is apocalypse spelled with a k and uh the end of it being like you know Y P S E. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, it should be L I P P S, like the band nah. lyrics from the seventies. That would be even better. It's apocalypse spelt normally, but the S is a Stussy S. Wait, what? You Say it again. You remember those Stussy S's? The like. Oh man! Draw yes. three, <laughs> draw three lines and three lines and connect them, and everyone in middle school thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yes. Yeah. Middle it's school. apocalypse with a Stussy S. But yeah, he's you, you, they stick him in his lab, and then he calls his bros. He texts his bros, but that's actually what they what they are. They're just fucking fancy cell phones, which is kind of that's really dumb, kind of dumb. And fun. that is the most disappointing thing I think I've heard on this episode <laughs> about this movie Fair enough. because I really like this movie and I dug the mother boxes and the whole technology thing, but that is so terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I got a bit. It might be a bob. I don't know. I really liked. The flashback uh, story scene of why the mother boxes were on Earth in the first place and the whole anti-life equation. And Mm. I liked how it was like uh, men and Atlanteans and Amazons and even the gods, you know, and there was like Zeus and Ares there. Like, I really liked that a lot. I thought that was cool. And there was even like an ancient green lantern there. The little Lord of the Rings section? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings section, yeah. I, I like that a lot. I like the battle I thought was cool. I dug that, like, you know, bringing the, the whole mythos of the gods and making it kind of like a reality back backward in time, you know, and, and throwing, like, a lantern into the mix. Like, I, I thought that was really cool. And that was a cool battle for sure. Mm. That's my Bob. Clearly, 
you don't agree. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I was like, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think we saw that in uh, the two towers, but I still liked it. Sure. I mean, you gotta you gotta have a big battle every once in a while, so gotta there's not many other ways to do it other than having armies smashing together, Braveheart style. Yeah, I definitely. Okay, this is kind of I don't know. This is like a gripe, but like I loved how when she's like getting to the end of the story and they all have the mother boxes, she's like, you see the, <laughs> you see the, <laughs> the Amazons are like you know building this impregnable stone fortress around the mother box, and then you know the Atlanteans have a very similar stone citadel, and then the mother box sits in the middle, and then the humans are like. Uh, we're just gonna bury it. In dude, the totally. Dirt. <laughs> I the was fucking, like, really? The dude? fucking trailer park boys dig a hole and throw it inside. Right. And not even bury it in the dirt like 12 or 30 feet down, but three feet. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that's uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, nobody's gonna find that. But then, and then it, to layer a gripe of Kev on top of that le- gripe of Kev, it's like, oh, let's layer it, dude. I love it. And then they went, and the men hid the box for eternity by burying it. And there's like 15 dudes standing there, knowing where it is. It's just like, it's not that much of a fucking <laughs> secret now, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. And the guy that was like the leader or whatever, like he looked all blown out. Like he hadn't had a shower in forever, and he was just drunk. <laughs> you know, like not very warrior esque. Oh, that's good. That's a very worthy gripe of Kev. I I approve this message. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think he was uh, carrying carrying a uh, rum and coke and a little rocks glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Julian. Yeah, <laughs> totally like Julian. One of the dudes in the background had a bathrobe on. Totally. Uh, next, Benny, you got a bit or a bob or. Some more hatred. <laughs> oh, um, oh my god, it's so funny! Give me one thing you liked. Ooh, there we go. I I kind of liked when Superman busted Flash. I mean, the scene is totally stupid. Where like Cyborg is like, I can't stop my automatic self defense system. <laughs> yeah, it was dumb. that whole stupid thing. But like, you know, Flash like tries to jet basically, and like Superman is in the middle of a fight, and he just kind of like. You know, turns his eye towards Flash, and Flash yes. is like, "Oh fuck, he sees me!" Like, yeah, that <laughs> just was like cool. that. I don't know why. I just, I just do. Yeah, no, that was good. It's a I good Superman um, moment. It's a good Superman character moment for sure. Mm, you're like, mm, can he? Is is he too fast for Superman? Nope. <laughs> nope. There were some great Superman-y moments like that in this movie. I really like when Superman showed up at the end, like, and literally stopped the blade like half of an inch from chopping cyborg in half like Mm. i love that and then you know it's i mean it's not like anything earth shattering but it's just great when like you've got these five you know people with abilities and you know they're pretty powerful man and they're really dialing it in and they're kind of getting knocked around and then to see a, a a hero or a character with on the level of superman show up and just throw the craziest beating down on the villain you know mm, it was just yeah. uber satisfying man like i loved i don't know how i feel about the black costume it definitely gave it a little more credence that he was walking through the ship and all of the various different costumes were kind of revealing themselves so he got to choose one so from that standpoint i it made it a little bit easier to swallow you know i think in the comics It was like a black suit with no cape, which I thought was dumb. But I liked just watching him, like, pound on Steppenwolf and, like, burn a hole through him with his heat vision. And that was very satisfying to me. I I really, really liked that. And just as a general note, I thought that final assault on the Citadel was, was pretty damn good, man. Like, Batman with the Batmobile just, like, flying through there and then ejecting out of there in a very uh, EBD kind of way. <laughs> and there was just some good battle scenes in there. I really liked it. Yeah, he definitely, like, does the uh, Reservoir Dogs, cuts the dude's ear off with his laser eyes, which is kind of sick. I wasn't digging the black suit either, but evidently it's a, it's a thing, so whatever. I don't really, it's fine. I definitely agree that there were some good superman moments in this, and I think that the Superman in this is stronger than the Superman in the other two. Snyder Superman movies just character wise but um mm-hmm. yeah yeah I feel you the end the end battle I enjoyed even though like we said or I've said a few times like pretty much everything in this is super tropey and super vanilla but 
it's a bunch of characters. Like I can't get over the characters. I I didn't realize that fucking the debut for these characters. Batman, 1939. Superman, 1938. Wonder Woman, 41. Mm -hmm. Flash, 40. Mm -hmm. Aquaman, 41. Like, there's some old fucking characters, dude. If you had been like, when were these characters created? I would have told you, like, the 60s or something, so. Yeah, right, right. It's no wonder it's tropey, because they fucking invented the tropes, (laughs) like, when my grandfather was fucking prepubescent, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it's fucking bananas. Well, I mean, if you you take it from that that frame, you know, you can, you can... You know, have an, another layer of appreciation for it. Sure, you know, it's like sure they're truly the originators of it. You know, like I mean, look, just take it in a vacuum. Like, put the fatigue aside and all of that. Like, the end battle was great. You know, like yeah, Flash running the perimeter to build up a charge. Batman just, you know, the one guy who's like an actual human being just charging down the middle in the Batmobile. Like the dude is. It was just a great like Batman no fear moment. You know, mm. like so there was there was just some cool stuff there. In a slightly one less, thing about uh, it that sorry, go ahead. I was going to say one thing about that final shindig that strikes me as it strikes me as very Justice League. The like you know each person had their you know they have like this kind of Rube Goldberg machine you know plan where each yeah. person has their own little sort of role to play and you know one thing kicks off the next thing sort of I don't know. There's something that strikes me as very Justice League about that. Mm. You guys feeling that at all, or you mean like like interconnected parts, or like everybody's got like a cell, and then they all kind of come together? Is that kind of what you well, mean? Well, it's like they they had a plan going in, right? Mm. And each person had their own little role to play mm-hmm. in executing that plan. Yes, is super Justice Leaguey. Is super Justice Leaguey? Yeah, for some I dig reason. that. Maybe I'm off base there, but you know, I feel like the Marvel stuff. It's kind of like. All right, let's just go and fight. You know, it's just kind of more of like a which uh, is more of a Marvel free thing. for all sort of thing, where it's like they came up with this plan that's like, oh boy, it's kind of kooky, might not work, but you know, yeah, yeah, it, it was. I, I liked it. I, I liked it that they went in with a a plan like that. I feel like the Marvel movies tended to be more like, all right, let's duke it out again. No, you know, and this had yeah, a little I, bit more thought into it. I guess I don't know where I'm getting that from, but I, I feel like you know that that kind of thing used to play out in like the you know, old like Justice League cartoons, etc. Like, you know, totally, man. Super MacGyvery. Like, if I give you my bubble gum and you strap it to the bleep bloop, we'll totally be able to stop the guy with the giant head. And you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm totally right. feeling you. No, that was that was good, man. I, I like that part of it. You know, I think there was. I don't know. Again, I like the whole end. I, I like the whole end battle. I thought it was good, and that and that that being part of it, I hadn't really thought about it quite that way. So. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad that we I'm glad that it didn't roll to credits after like the team was standing on the windswept wall looking down in Chernobyl and stuff like, <clears throat> well, I'm sure we'll have a moment to talk Same. about the epilogue in a second, but I- I'm glad it didn't just like battle high fives freeze frame with a fucking classic rock song and the credits, you know, or like a, gro- a grossy showing up with some coffee. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. That was good. Go ahead. In a slightly not less film related, uh, bit and or bob in terms of the story i saw that um snyder i think probably diplomatically has stated that um his cut is not canonical and that whedon's cut is and then momoa and um wonder woman director patty jenkins were just like yeah nah our our shit's set in your 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 universe bro so i just think it's kind of interesting that he wants to kind of just be like this is my art house piece and then all of the other people are like no no we're on board with your motorcycle dude it's kind of interesting well they they yeah, it is because they had. Cons- I, I read something where Patty Jenkins had consulted and talked with him heavily when she was making Wonder Woman. So yeah, okay, it only makes sense that it's canonical to Snyder's, you know, version and vision. Sure, but I like that he. Well, I find it interesting that he's just like, yeah, no, it's not canonical, which is, as I said, probably just just being diplomatic. But it's still interesting. You mean it's interesting that all the people were like, yeah, no, we're with you, yeah. Yeah, and interesting that he would not just be like, yeah, my shit is canonical. You know, he's just like, yeah, no, nah, it's cool. Anyways, you get the point. I do get the point, Chad. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> I've got one more. So are going to start making all the movies in 4.3 now? Yeah. I didn't have much of an issue with that, to be honest, but I, I get why, why people would have. I didn't really care about that either. I, it didn't bother me at all. 
my my final bit and or Bob is just the two scenes from the original cut, the two uh, corn kernels in the dog shit. Mm. One is uh, when fucking get your motor running is attacking Atlantis and starts okay. kicking the shit out of all the Atlanteans to take the mother box at the last moment before he kills uh, redhead Mira, the queen. Aquaman flies in and saves the day. And in the theatrical cut, it's made clear that he was kind of in the area before that. Because I just was just like, seriously, he's fucking swoops in at the last second, like stupid. So it's literally yeah, like yeah. two seconds <laughs> from the original cut that would have benefited being in this. And then this, the second one has a little bit more substance. But I liked the scene where Flash is nervous about going into battle for the first time. And Batman says to save one person. I, I kind of like that. The, yeah, I like that too, man. I, I I'll I'll add one more, and that would be, I it was it was slightly extended from the Snyder version, and I liked both versions. Uh, the Snyder version was it made it a little bit more mysterious how she's like using the computer in the Bat Lab, the Baffleck Lab, and he it just got kind of scrambles, and then it shows a bit of a map, and it says "Meet me here." Oh, but I and, liked uh, how Wonder Woman is. Yeah, in the yeah, and and I liked how in the 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 justice league it was like a conversation you know she's like i want to meet face to face and he's like you are talking to me and it's right. all happening on the screen like I, I dug that a lot i thought that would have been cool in the in the snyder version as well right 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 yeah fair enough oh i, I do a, i do actually have one more minor bit where uh, i couldn't place the flash's dad and then i was like of course it's dr manhattan and i kind of like that dr manhattan is uh the flash's dad oh Billy Crudup, totally, man. He's great. Um, should we do what a, like, you want to bit and bob our way through the the post the epilogue, epilogue part? Yeah, I guess the only thing I, I mean, I the best part of this movie was the 10 minute epilogue, in my opinion. It was the most interesting part. Yeah, I thought it was really cool too. And it had bits of that sort of futuristic world that they had in Batman versus Superman. I'd watch, Anything I'd watch but, an entire movie about that. I just was like, yes, I would totally watch fucking. Mad Max, Batman, Fury Road. Batman in a trench coat, dude. I liked how they, they we got to see Cyborg this time and Mira and The Flash and Slade Wilson in that and meeting with Lex Luthor. That was super cool. Mm-hmm. And the Joker, obviously, too. Oh, God. Leto, yes. Mr. Wallace. And then referencing that he killed Robin and, like, yeah, there's just a lot in there that was that was interesting. Did you, did you have any time for the epilogue, no. Benny, or were you checked out by then? <laughs> I said, I said no. Oh, okay, I didn't hear you. The longer this movie got, the more, the more it could have been multiple movies or a fucking show or something. But I, I like the epilogue. I think releasing it as a miniseries or as two, two, two hour movies would have probably been a better. I think that's what he originally intended was like a Justice League one and two. You know, that would have been probably better. Certainly easier to get through. It's a lot. It's a long. Like I watched it. Was it six parts? I think I watched it in four sittings. I don't think I could have done it all at once. Yeah, it's cool that you can do that, though, that it's broken up like that. I yeah. dig it. And I like it. Yeah, there are six cha chapters to it. You know, it's pretty cool. But the presentation was great. You know, like, I mean, that's so very Zack Snyder, you know, to package it all up really well. It looks good. It's polished, you know, in that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought I'd have more to say about the epilogue, but I don't. I really, I was the best part of the movie. I'll probably watch that 10, 15 minutes again at some point, but. I think you said it all right there, dude. You know, it's super interesting. It's like, what's going on with that? You know? Yeah. It's a shame that we'll never, we'll probably never see anything more in that space, but I'll fire through an article to put in the show notes that talked about all the crazy shit where, you know, Batman hooked up with Lois Lane and stuff. It's interesting, even though it doesn't sound overly interesting. Um, nuggets test ratings. Yes. Nuggets. Um, I don't really anything. No. What do you got? You you go. I've got uh, two DC Comics nuggets and two movie nuggets. The DC Comics nuggets, which were kind of weird, is um, a dude named William Moulton Marston, born in 1893, created Wonder Woman. Um, he was a psychologist that created the prototype for the... Um, uh, where the fuck is it? What's the name of the... Um, Bleep bloop? Yeah, the bleep bloop. <laughs> the fucking test you take to tell if you're telling the truth or not. I'm totally brain Polygraph. Polygraph, thank you. He created the prototype for the polygraph. 
and was in a polyamorous relationship with two women, and Wonder Woman is based on his two wives, which is just the weirdest thing ever, but kind of an interesting nugget. Hmm. That is a good nugget. That's interesting. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird, but it's cool. My second DC nugget is that um, in 1986, Lex Luthor was redesigned from scratch, intending to make him a villain that the 80s would recognize, a.k.a. an evil corporate executive and... This dude, John Byrne, modeled him after Ted Turner and Donald Trump, which is interesting. And then in 2001, a a one-shot called Lex 2000 came out where he um, was elected president of the United States. Ooh. So it's just kind of a random mirroring of uh, some of our recent reality. Interesting. I... Here's a here's one. It's not nothing crazy, but it, that's kind of interesting, man. I just ch- didn't even think about it, is that... Willem Dafoe and J.K. Simmons were in Spider-Man together. Yeah, man. I didn't even think about that. Kind of cool. I'm kind of okay with the fact that people are playing different characters. It's just they they both kind of Of threw me for a bit of a loop. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. You seem really hung up on the J. Jonah thing. I I thought, you know, like if you're going to have somebody play Gordon, like J.K. is perfect. He's so capable as an actor, man. You know, he's as good as Gary Oldman and – I'm very curious to see what Jeffrey Wright does with it in the in the. Oh, I didn't Batman know it was Jeffrey film. Wright. He'd do a good job. I love Jeffrey Wright. I do too, man. He was fantastic as uh, Felix Leiter in the Bond movies, man. Yeah, totally. And as Basquiat in, ba- in Basquiat. He's great. Um, yeah. In a, what was it? Hunt for Red October and we did a movie recently where, I, oh, it was Die Hard. I think it was Die Hard 2. Where there was a teddy bear that was the same teddy bear from two movies. Do you remember that? What? Yes, I do yeah. remember that. I think we were talking about the teddy bear that uh, Bruno buys for his daughter in Die Hard 2, if I remember correctly. And it's exactly the same teddy bear that uh, Baldwin buys for his daughter in Red October because it was the one owned by the director. Uh, Correct. Similar yes. similar vibe here. The angel statue seen in the graveyard where Cyborg digs up a grave is the same statue seen at the comedian's funeral in The Watchmen. Wow. I like it. Kind of random. Yeah, kind of random, but kind of cool too, man. You may or may not dig this one, and you may or may not have picked up on it, but the cop that Lois gives coffee to at the Superman memorial is the same actor who played Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman. The guy, the coffee shop barista? No, the cop that she gives coffee to. Or one of the Get cops that she here. gives coffee to, evidently. That's the guy that played Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman movies? Evidently. Wow. That is cool, man. Them's my nuggets. I love it. Deaths. I think you're the only one that died this week, bro. Uh, I am. There was one death and it was me. That was it. And that would be the, uh, I like the title of this death, the Village People You Dildo Death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ben died throughout, I suppose. There's a lot of Batmans that in this DOA. one. That was DOA. Well, Ben, Ben. I mean, technically, yeah. DOA, really. <laughs> DOA. <laughs> you will die a thousand Batman deaths. It's a lot of Batman deaths. And then I didn't die. I'm sure we could find something that I that I said or did that was death worthy, but probably calling you a dildo. That's pretty dumb. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't really want to mine for the deaths. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need to do that. Ratings, Benny. I <laughs> I hope that there's some. Some horribleness here. He's gonna like go flat zero and just fucking nope out. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Go. I can't wait. You don't know what my rating is? Yeah. I would rather watch Thor Dark World. <laughs> wow. <Whoa! laughs> yeah, that's amazing. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. In EBD canon, I think that was probably one of our least favored. Yeah. All three films. of us rated it at the bottom of the MCU. I believe we Mm -hmm. did. Yes. So there you go. That's great. I love that. (laughs) All right. I'll go next. Um, All right. Go. I think that this movie, because it is an indulgence, means that it has a fundamental flaw no matter how good it was. Therefore, it would it would be in the borderline territory for me and my algorithm. So the maximum score it could get is a 4.9, even if it were a masterpiece. But I didn't dislike the movie. I enjoyed it. I thought it was all right. You know, I'm willing to forgive a lot of the slow motion Snyderisms, and I enjoyed the, um, the darkness, literally. I enjoyed the color palette. I enjoyed, you know, 
the indulgence of being able to see someone get 70 mil to finish something that he started. Um, it gets a 4.1 mm-hmm. on the uh, Algo. It uh, It's better than Iron Man 2, 3, The Incredible Hulk, and The Avengers. It is, wow. it is not as good as Spider-Man Homecoming, Winter Soldier, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man Far From Home. I think Captain Marvel will probably drop a few more spots, but this is just based on the historic Algo stuff. So it's lower tier MCU movie, maybe mid tier. Um, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, despite my love going into this movie, you guys have definitely uh, opened my eyes up to, or reminded me of, or brought things to my attention that I think could have been better. I still, I still really like this movie. I think. You know, after seeing in 2017 the original, like, this is exactly what the Justice League movie should be. Yes, is the story tired? Yes. You know, are there tired elements? Yeah. But still, for a team-up movie, I think it's definitely better than Age of Ultron, you know? It's yep. good to see these characters in a, in a team-up scenario, you know? And, and like Ben said, you know, the final battle was epic, and I liked how everybody had, like, a piece of the puzzle to complete, you know? You know, and having Superman come in at the end and lay the beat down on uh, Steppenwolf was great. And you know, there's just I liked it because there was we got to see lots of good lore as well. You know, I didn't talk about that before, but hmm. we got to understand why you know these things happened and why the mother boxes are there. And it's like, yeah, sure, are the mother bo- boxes God cell phones? Yes, is that dumb? Yes, but still, taking it at face value, I, I think it's a great execution and. Snyder's a really visual storyteller, man, and you got to give it to him. It, it looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, are there things that I think would have been better? I The more I think about the Batman section, when we talked about that, I really think you should have dialed, made made the differentiation there, you know, and really had him visit more of the people as Batman than Bruce Wayne. I think that would have been better. It felt a little lazy, I guess, and as an afterthought, you know, or in retrospect. So, um, yeah, sure, there's things i change, but I still think this is really great. Yeah, I would totally watch it again, and I think anybody that's, you know, if you're into superhero movies or the DC characters, like, go watch Man of Steel, get the extended cut of um, Dawn of Justice, and watch this cut as well. Like, there's a lot of entertaining stuff there. I think the fatigue is definitely wearing me down on superheroes in general. And it's like each time we watch one, it's like another nail in the coffin now. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It's like I'm kind of. No, I'm you know, with you. Eh. Yeah. I think we're all kind of there. And but still, it, it was it was good. Like, you know, yeah. Was it four hours? Is, is that a long time? Yeah, it's a long time. You know, it's eight hours, 10 hours I spent watching this movie in the last couple of weeks. So but I still I still really liked it a lot. So and it's by and large, like w- Above the other, like other movie is just absolute garbage compared to this. Like this mm. is like really nice to watch, you know. So I'm gonna give it an eight. Sweet. Yeah. I would uh, just very briefly tack on to your recommendation to watch the three movies. I just did that over the last few days, and I, mm. I think uh, if I didn't have to do it for the show, I'd probably put a week between each viewing. <laughs> so if if you are planning to watch all three of these movies, uh, maybe do one one a week or something. Otherwise, you're probably going to be pretty grumpy about uh, the last couple hours of Snyder Cut. Yeah, I think, you know, like another closing thought would be like, you know, Zack Snyder's great and like he's done some great stuff that we love, but like, and and that I love. But, you know, maybe the thing to do would have been put the focus more on a cohesive plan and story and maybe had him kind of spearhead it a little bit and do Man of Steel and then kind of get some other directors in there Mm. and keep a keep a singular vision or a singular tone, like maybe keep the tone in all of the movies dark, but get some different directors in there, you know? And I think that might've been a a better way for them to go. Cause I think at this point they've kind of shot themselves in the leg. No doubt. There's, there's, there's some great elements in all of these DC things, you know, and you know, the suicide squad, the new trailer looks interesting, but They've been so, like, up and down, and it's in such extremes, you know? It's just like, this is amazing, and this sucks, and this is amazing, and then this sucks, you know? Like, talking about the various different movies, you know? Yeah. And there's no cohesiveness with the TV universe as well, so it's kind of... 
I don't know. They're just so all over the place, man. I'm I'm really curious to see what happens. Mm, yeah. And at the same time, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, I'm tired. Strangely, I don't care. So anyway, that's that. What's uh, algorithm? What do we got going on next week? We sure. have a special event next week where we're doing a Stallone movie with the Rolling Stallones. Whoa! Which should be fun. Definitely. I believe we're doing Rocky Three. Oh, yes. Rocky Three, for sure. Oh, man. I love that movie. I love that movie, too, man. Talk about a great soundtrack. Jesus. New totally. Uh, wow. Well, that sounds exciting. I'm excited for that. Um, sure that the uh, listeners will be excited as well. So, folks, thanks for tuning in to this love-hate fest of this <laughs> uh, Justice League movie. I think everybody gets that we're tired of superheroes at this point. And tune in next week for Stallone's on Stallone. That is sure to be fun. Take care now. See ya. Bye. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode, folks. You can find the show notes for this episode in your podcast app O choice or at our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 104. If you'd like to support us, you can do it in many ways. You can write us a review on iTunes, that's the best place, or any other place that does podcasts. Reviews are fantastic. They really help people decide whether they want to hear our show or not. And that's cool. Also, tell your friends to check out the show. Word of mouth is very powerful. Don't forget, we are on social media. Engage with us. Hang out with us. Comment with us. Nerd out with us on social media. We use the handle at EBD Podcast for, I think, every single social media channel we're on. So get on it. Hope you enjoyed this episode covering Zack Snyder's Justice League. I certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> And stay tuned next week as we get into yet another Stallone movie with the Rolling Stallones, sure to be a hoot. And we'll see you next time, folks. Stop into it.